striving in my own strength I'm striving in yours I'm not trying to find my own way I'm walking that course Not thinking about my own plans Thinking about yours With you my steps are safe You motion me for What's going on? Welcome to Generation Church. Thank you so much for being with us, for tuning in. I am here with two of our Saturday setup helpers, Gabe and Damien. They are helping us set up here at Keeney Memorial Cultural Center. It's where we gather every first Sunday. Uh, but hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you also click the bell notification and give us a thumbs up as well. You can follow us on social media at GC underscore reach. We set up here at Keeney Memorial Cultural Center every single first Saturday of the month for our first Sunday gathering. If you don't know that, now you know we will be gathering in September, September 4th at the Cove service. So if you are looking to get come together with us for our first Sunday gathering in September, it's going to be at the Cove in Weathersfield. Uh, four other churches gather together and it's going to be an awesome time. Uh, but hey, thanks so much for tuning in with us today. We are going to replay a message that we preached earlier in the year. Uh, so just prepare your hearts today. Uh, be ready for God to speak to you and make sure that you stay tuned for worship after the message. Uh, hey boys, what? did you guys have fun with first Sunday setup? Yeah. 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 They love it. They are our hands and feet. It is an awesome time here when we set up on Saturday. Uh, but we just love you so much. We care about you. Let us know how we can serve you. And always remember. You belong. Do, you belong. Oh, come on. What do we say here at Generation Church? One, two, you belong. You belong. That's right. All right. I hope you have a blessed day. God bless. And I'm going to be reading today out of Luke chapter 5, verse 1. I'm super excited for this message. As uh, you are aware, if you've been tuning in over the past couple weeks, we are doing a kind of like a series or talk, collection of talks that are focused on our core values. And you can find all of those on our website. And I just find it so important for us to continue to work through the core values, how uh, the things that God has placed inside of the heart of Generation Church and how we operate, how we make decisions are based out of these core values. And so today I'm going to be preaching again out of one of our core values. I've preached out of um, the first one, Jesus is our message. Uh, authenticity is our anchor, community is our commitment, and today, today I'm going to be preaching out of growth is our mindset. Growth is our mindset. That's one of our core values today. I'm going to be talking out of Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 11, uh, but before I dive into God's Word, let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for what you're doing in your people's lives. Lord, I thank you that you have placed unique purpose on the inside of us, Father, and that you are the ultimate creator, Lord God. You have created us. You have knitted us together, together in our mother's womb. You have great purpose for us, Father. So I pray right now that you speak to your people. Lord, that this message as it goes forth, Lord, it shall not return unto his void, but that you will continue to pour into your people, Lord, and that you have something unique and specific for them to hear today. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We give you the glory, you the praise, and you the honor today. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. 
Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Let's read today. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him, this is Jesus, was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. That's how you pronounce that, Genesaret. Verse 2, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Right here, what's happening is uh, Jesus is teaching the people about the kingdom of God. He's teaching them, and he's going through everything, and they're, they're, the crowds are just gathering. So many people are gathering and pushing on him, and he's obviously, you know, his back is up against the water, and he's like trying to figure out, how do I solve this problem right now? All these people are want to listen to this, but I, I, I can't keep doing it in the current situation that I am in right now. And so he goes over to Simon, and he says, you know, can, we, can I just jump in your boat real quick? We'll go out a little bit. Give me a little space. And as the people gather, they won't be pushing me into the water uh, because I'm sitting in your boat. And I find this to be incredible because although Jesus was trying to figure out how to solve this problem, he could have chose anybody. The, the scripture says that he saw two boats, actually. He saw two boats by the lake, two of them, but, but he chose one. He chose Simon's boat. And I, I asked myself this question, why did he choose Simon's boat? I want you to write this down today, this first point. Jesus saw the person, not the position. Jesus saw the person amongst all this, all the, this gigantic crowd. He saw the person, not the position. You know, Simon was done for the day. He was done for the day. And, and Jesus could have said, I need the biggest boat. I got I to gotta get in the, in, the, in the yacht. I got to get in the most beautiful boat so that I have some space for myself. But what Jesus did is he chose a fisherman's boat. He chose Simon's boat. And Simon was done for the day. He was washing his nets. He was cleaning them. And uh, he had nothing. He had caught nothing. He had uh, nothing to show for his day's work. Uh, this was Simon's trade. This is what he did for a living. Uh, he caught fish and provided fish, and he had caught nothing. And so he was washing his nets, and uh, what Jesus was looking at was Simon as the person, not his position, because I'm sure he could have found a fisherman that caught thousands of fish. He's like, this guy knows what he's doing. I'm gonna, I need to jump in his boat real quick so I can teach the people. Simon uh, was the one that Jesus was looking for. Jesus saw Simon. He saw the person, not the position. And I can tell you right now that a lot of times what we focus on so much is the position of the person rather than their character, rather than who they are. Uh, we try to find the best dressed, the best looking, the most followers. We focus so much on the position rather than who the person is. And that's what Jesus was doing here. For a very long time in my life, I, I thought, you know, when I arrived, I will be successful. When I get here, when I reach this point in life, then I will be successful. And what I was doing was comparing my life against other people. And success is not measured by comparison. Success is measured by how long you stay on mission. I'm going to say that again. Success is not measured by comparison. By, oh, I see how successful that person is when I get there, when I reach that point. Uh, that is, that is how, how successful I'm going to be. I just, I just got to get there. Success is not measured by comparison. It's measured by how long you stay on mission. Each and every one of us has a mission that God has called us to. And we are so consumed by what the next position is going to be or, or how, who the next successful person is when rather God is just calling us to be consistent with our specific mission. Hebrews 12, one says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let me tell you, people are watching you and what you do in your life. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us what? Run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. You're in a race. I'm in a race. We're all in a race in this life. And God has marked out a race for you. Your mission, he has marked out a race for you. Run your race, not someone else's. 
God is not looking for you to run someone else's race. And I, and I love this too, because a race is, uh, it's not a sprint. It's not the 100 meter dash. It's, a race is a long time. And I think of like watching the, the Daytona 500, like that's a lot of laps around in a circle. That's a long race. This life that, give, that Jesus has given us, this life, is a race. It is not a sprint. We are all on a race. And if you're a follower of Christ today, I'd also encourage you that this life is a marathon. This race is longer than just a sprint. Jesus knew when he chose Simon, he knew that Simon hadn't caught in anything all day, that he hadn't caught one thing. He knew that Simon was cleaning his nets, washing his nets, and he was done for the day, and he caught nothing. But what he also knew is that Simon would be back there tomorrow, is that he was going to show up tomorrow, and he was going to get in his boat, and he was going to fish again. Obviously, Jesus had different plans for Simon, but what he, was, what he saw inside of Simon was his consistency. He saw that although he hadn't caught anything, he was going to wash his nets, prepare for the next day. And I can tell you right now that Jesus wants to encourage you with that one thing, that although you may have not gotten that answered prayer that you have been praying for, you may have not gotten that job, maybe uh, that thing that you knew, that relationship that you thought was going to work out never worked out, and you're trying to figure out a new way on how to do life, whatever it is in your life, that although it may not be, exactly what you wanted it to be, Jesus still got you. He still loves you, and he wants you to come back tomorrow. He wants you to come back. Jesus actually says that uh, the worries of today are enough for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. He wants you right where you are at. So no matter how many mistakes you've made, how many times you've messed up, he loves you. He saw Simon And he knew that Simon, his character, who he was, his consistency was exactly what Jesus needed in a disciple. Let's keep reading in verse four. Verse verse four says, and when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They caught so many fish that their nets were breaking. Write this down today. Sustainable growth, sustainable growth comes from going deep. Sustainable growth comes from going deep. Jesus said, hey, I'm, I'm done over here. I'm done talking to the crowd. Simon, why don't we go a little deeper? Why don't we just put out to the deep? Yes, Jesus wanted to show Simon a miracle, but I also believe that Jesus wanted to isolate Simon. He, Jesus said, it, it, maybe, maybe if I could just get Simon alone, if I could just get him by himself, then maybe I can really show him who I am. Maybe today Jesus wants to get you alone. He wants to be alone with you. And you've tried to figure out your faith or figure out what you're supposed to do with your life or figure out what this thing even means of having faith or having trust in Jesus or or, or, or what it means to have a relationship with God. Maybe you're trying to figure out, I'd encourage you to, to get alone with the Lord. Eliminate all the distractions and get alone with him today because he wants to be alone with you. And too often we're so concerned with the task at hand that... We lose track of who's in the room. Jesus never lost track of who was around him. He never lost track of that. Yes, there was something that needed to be fixed, this problem. He needed to get in a boat so that he wasn't pushed in by the crowds. But he never lost track of who was in the room. And so often we're concerned about the task that we lose track of who God is calling us to speak to and get alone with. Uh, Jesus got in the boat not only to solve a problem, but to be alone with Simon. And actually, the other day I had 
the incredible privilege of actually being on a Zoom call with uh, John Maxwell. And if you know John Maxwell, he is a, a leadership guru and he's a brilliant man and God has used him in the, in the business field and uh, the area of leadership in some incredible ways. And through another pastor, I was able to be on a Zoom call with 10 other pastors uh, uh, with John Maxwell. And it was an incredible experience. Um, I was so grateful for it. But John Maxwell was talking on the Zoom call about the All-Stars, and he was golfing with Charles Barkley and another uh, coach that uh, he's a life coach for a lot of these uh, big professional athletes. And uh, he was talking to him about being a life coach for All-Stars. John asked this guy, you know, how do you lead or how do you uh, be a life coach to these people that are incredible athletes that are really the All-Stars, they're experts in their craft. How do you lead them? And this guy responded to John Maxwell and said, I believe that my role in their life, because I can't teach them on how to dribble, I can't teach them on how to shoot, that's not my, my expertise, but he said, I believe my role in their life is to keep them from being distracted, to keep them from being distracted. And as John Maxwell was sharing this, I immediately was impacted by this story because we are so focused on the distraction around us that God has called you to greatness, but what are those things that are distracting you in your lives? And a lot of times uh, we look at the distraction and we try to hide it or hold it to ourselves and don't share it with anybody. And nobody really wants to share the deep parts of our lives. Nobody wants to uh, dive deeper into the distractions that we face late at night in our bed, the, 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 uh, the torture of anxiety and depression that we face every single day. We don't want to share that with other people. We don't want to go deep. And so a lot of times what we do is we hold that to ourselves and we don't even share it with Jesus. We don't even share it in our prayer time because, oh God, how could, how could you love me when I struggle with this? How can you love me when I struggle with pornography? How can you love me when I struggle with alcoholism? How can you love me when I struggle with, uh, with, with abu- emotional abuse? Let me encourage you today that God wants the depth of your soul to be known to him. He knows already what's going in your life, going on in your life. Are you going to share it with him? He wants you to be transparent with him. Jesus wanted to go deep with Simon. He didn't realize this. And today I'd encourage you to go deeper with Jesus because it's in those distractions that God is going to reveal himself to you. The depth is revealing the distractions today. And whatever that distraction is in your life, I'd encourage you to give it to the Lord. He wants you to go to him with everything. There's not one thing that he can't handle at all. I want to read in Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 through 14. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways, that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. Verse 14, listen to this. This is what the Lord said to Moses. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Moses was distracted right now in this place of, well, who are you going to send with me, God? I know you that you've, you've called me to continue this mission forward, but who, who are you going to send with me? Moses was distracted, but what God wanted to do was go deeper with him. God said, my presence will go with you. God is with you always. He never leaves your side. He is with you wherever you go. And he wants to bring you rest today. Whatever you've been struggling with, whatever you've been wrestling with, whatever that thing that has kept you up at night with, God wants to go deeper with you. Sustainable growth. If we want to grow consistently, sustainable growth comes from going deep. Let's close today as we read verse 7 through 11. 
they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled the boat, both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were, who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Listen to this. When they had brought their boats to the land, they didn't sell all the fish. They didn't bring them to the market and make millions of dollars. What did they do? They left everything and followed him. They left everything and followed Jesus. Write this down today. We grow through relatability, reassurance, and recall. We grow through relatability, reassurance, and recall. And now let me tell you right now that I, when I talk about growth here, growth is our mindset, that's our core value, that's what we're talking about today. I'm talking about spiritually, emotionally, mentally, uh, physically, I'm talking about relationally. Growth in every area of your life. We grow through relatability, through reassurance, and through recall. Right here, uh, Jesus told them to put their nets on the other side. He said, put your nets out. Go deep and put your nets out. He related to their exact profession. What Simon did for a living, he related to him. Hey, listen, I want, I want to show you who I am. So I'm going to relate to what you know in this moment, which is that you've caught no fish and I can provide that for you. So put your net down. He related to them. That to them that to, 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 to Simon was success. If I caught all this fish, I was successful. And he related to them in that moment. And then he reassured Simon. He said, do not be afraid. He reassured him, do not be afraid. In order for us to be reassured of what God has called us, we need to be sure of who God is in our lives. That Jesus, when our identity is found in Jesus, that right there is all that we need. When our faith is found in the Lord, in what Jesus has done on the cross over 2,000 years ago, that his blood was shed for you and for me so that we don't need to live in sin and shame and, and, and depression and heartache, but that we can have abundant life through a relationship with Jesus. Jesus said, do not be afraid. He reassured them. If we want to grow, if we want to grow, we need to understand that the, the scriptures are relatable, that they, are, they can relate to us, that we can relate to the scripture, that God has given us his word. This is the inspired word of God written by man and that it is relatable today, but also that he has reassured you. He has reassured you that you don't need to be afraid. He is with you wherever you go. And the third is to recall. I think it is crucial that if we want to grow in life, if we want to grow spiritually, we need to recall all that God has done in our lives. And we don't stay back. We don't, we don't stare in the rear view mirror. If you're driving, you're not driving forward on Route 91 staring in the rear view mirror. That would be extremely dangerous. <laughs> don't do that. We stare at the windshield but we check the rear view mirror. We recall what's behind us, making sure that everything is good. I think a lot of times in life, we never ever recall. We never look in the rear view mirror. And that, you know, I'm just going forward, I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through, I'm going forward, I'm going forward, I'm going forward, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. And a lot of times, what that is, is we are just doing without realizing all that God has done. It's important for us to recall all that he has done in our lives. I wouldn't be where I am today if it hadn't been for Jesus. Changing my life, rearranging my purpose, putting me on a path of success. He, what I thought was my purpose, he said, ah, I got something greater for you, Kev. I got something more impactful for you, Kev. And Jesus completely changed my life. And I look back and I see where my life could have been. And I'm so grateful that I didn't follow that path and that Jesus pulled me out of that, that sin and that shame. Growth is our mindset because Jesus wants us to grow. He wants us to grow and growth starts with a relationship. It starts with a genuine relationship with your creator. A relationship 
that can go beyond anything you've ever thought or imagined. Our Creator wants us to grow. He wants us to continue to know more about Him, to continue to grow in our relationships here on earth. He wants us to grow every single day. He did not create us to sit still. He created us to grow. And so today, if you want to grow, if you want to take that next step to grow in your relationship with God, the first step that you can do is receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. That is the greatest step that you could ever make. And today, if you want to make that decision, uh, it's very simple to just say this prayer after me. The Bible is clear that if you believe in your heart and profess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you shall be saved. And so today, if you want to make that decision to follow Jesus, just say this simple prayer after me. Say, Father God, I receive your son, Jesus. I believe he died on a cross and rose again. I welcome him into my life. Make me new. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today, that's exciting and we want to know about it. You can send an, Im- an email to info at gcreach.org. You can write it in the chat, DM us on social media. However, we want to know about it because we want to come alongside you. If you want to grow in your spirituality, in your, in your life, in your emotional strength, in your uh, physical strength, whatever it is, we want to come alongside you as a church. So that growth is your mindset, uh, because that's our mindset as well. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in, for being with us. Remember, I'm going to go over this real quick. Jesus, he saw the person, not the position. Sustainable growth comes from going deep. There's not a don't be afraid to go deep with the Lord. And the third one, we grow through relatability, reassurance and recall. Remember that today as you're going through your work week, as you're going through your week, whatever that looks like, uh, remember that God loves you and he cares about you and he wants you to grow. And so we love you. We care about you. Let us know how we can be praying for you. Let us know how we can serve you. But always, always remember that you belong. God bless. Have a great week.